our nightline. We had such a wonderful time on this first hour. And I tell you, God is really blessing tonight. We pray that you are being blessed at home as well. We do have another author uh, on the program with us tonight. Her name is Diane Callahan. She's the author of a book for such a time as this. So I'm, I'm excited to talk to her about her book. Um, Diane lives in Huntington Pass, South Carolina with her four-legged fur babies. <laughs> She's the mother of two and grandmother of two. Callahan enjoys going on mission trips and lending her help uh, whenever she can. So hi, Diane. Hi. How nice are you? to meet you, Annie. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. <laughs> God bless you, sweet woman of God. Thank you. Same to you. I have been enjoying our time together, just chit-chatting before we came on the air, and I can just tell that you have such a beautiful heart, a beautiful spirit, and we're just going to enjoy ourselves tonight. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we are. We are. So, Diane, tell us a little about yourself. Well, um, I work for a dentist in Honeyapath, and I've been in dentistry now for almost 40 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, coming up on retirement soon, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but um, as, as you said, I, I live in Honeyapath, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I have two wonderful grandchildren, uh, Kara and Garrett. Uh, Garrett is 13 and Kara mm -hmm. is five. And then I have a son and a daughter. And um, uh, their names is Chris and Amanda. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so you have some fur babies. I do. What are fur babies? Cats. <laughs> <laughs> They're cats. Mm -hmm. So, how many cats do you have? Oh gosh, uh, my my grandson calls me the cat lady. So, if that tells you anything, <laughs> um, I have I have several, and I have some that live in the house that never step foot outside. So, wow. they're spoiled. They're spoiled. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I tell you what, I've I've never owned a cat as far as I can think back. My grandmother may have, mm -hmm. but I never have. And uh, so, you like cats? You know, better than dogs? Or? No, we, we've always had pets in our family. Mm -hmm. We've had dogs and, um, you know, they've passed on as most of them do. But yeah. it's just like now I'm, I'm with, stuck with cats. Yeah. So, so yeah. what kind of hobbies do you like? What do you like to do every day? <laughs> uh, well, working and, and taking care of my animals and, and visiting with my grandkids as much as I can or having them over. Yeah. Um, I love to read. I mean, that's, that's probably my hobby. Yeah. is reading a lot. Mm -hmm. um, a teacher told me when I was in grammar school that if you can't go places, you can read about it. Wow. And you can learn a lot. So, and now with internet and and everything, everything's <laughs> accessible. So, yeah. you know, but yes, I love to read. And with COVID, you about have to stay home and oh, read, exactly. right? exactly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Get ma on the internet. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's how you travel now. That's how people travel now is You're, on the internet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It mm -hmm. is. It is. So. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I love to do Bible studies, too. So wow. um, I, I led a group for probably about 14 years oh, you did? in my home. And then when I started writing this book, um, I told them, I said, I've got to stop for a while. And, and just focus on this book. So yeah. then COVID hit mm. and we all stopped. So <laughs> nobody's coming to my house now, but, but those, those are my hobbies. Wow. I'm kind of quiet. Well, quiet I, love, I love your heart. I love your book. I had a sh uh, chance to, to read your book and even the title of it for such a time as this. I mean, that's enough to draw you in, right? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, well, that title came, um, I, had, I had promised myself back in 2019, mm -hmm. I was going to read the Bible through, but <sighs> I didn't want to read it through in a year. I wanted to just take my time and go slowly. And when I got to the book of Esther, that's when God gave me the name wow. of, of my book. And um, that's how it came to be, you know, in the story of Esther, where Mordecai is telling Esther, you know, God's put you in a position as for such a time as this. Yeah. And of course, I'm not saving a nation or anything, but um, <laughs> I'm hoping my book will reach people and let them know that um, God is real and God is good. And, yes. And he wants the best for us. Yeah. You know. Um, I love when I, I think for such a time as this, 
uh, talking about Esther, yes. I think it was on page 70, I was saying, oh, okay, now mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grabbing hold to right. why she titled that for such a time as this. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and, and when I had sat down to start writing the book, um, someone asked me, they said, how did you know when to put what where? I said, I didn't. God was the one that led this book from page one to the end. He's the one that led it, so. I love that you are being spirit led by God, the Holy Spirit yes. is just guiding you. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to do this book. You didn't? No, no, I didn't. Um, uh, I didn't put this part in the book, but as I was telling you earlier, yeah. it was probably about four and a half years ago. One Sunday morning, I was going to church and I stopped at this stop sign and there was a billboard over to the right. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and on the billboard, it was advertising for a uh, Suboxone and Methadone clinic. Okay. And it said, um, addiction stops here. And I just muttered to myself, and I said, no, addiction stops with Jesus. Wow. And <laughs> all of a sudden, I heard this voice. I mean, just as you and I are sitting here. Yeah. And, and God told me, he said, you're going to write a book. And I said, Lord, you, you're not talking to the right person here. You know, <laughs> I, I love to write, I journal, but yeah. I don't write books. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, you're going to write a book. And it was just as clear as, as your voice is to me. So I went on to church and, mm -hmm. um, and I was telling someone there at church, you know, I said, I just had this funny revelation this morning. I heard a voice telling me yeah. I was going to write a book. And they said, well, how do you know it, that it wasn't God? And I said, I don't, I'm not a writer. Yeah. And uh, they said, well, did he tell you what to write? And I said, no. But for the next two years, Annie, he kept, uh, when I would be studying my Bible, or I'd mm -hmm. hear a song. And, and you know, in the book, there were a couple songs that I mentioned. Um, God would tell me write that in the book, write that in the book. So I started keeping a composition book and I would write down scripture or I'd write down a song as he told me what he wanted me to put in the book. And you know, and all the time I kept thinking, this is, this is never gonna happen, you wow. know, but I'm gonna be obedient, Lord. I'll write it yeah. down if you want me to. Yeah. And um, so I was on the mission trip and um, the first, well, I'd been on several, but this was the first time my son had got to go with me. Mm -hmm. And that morning, I was sitting there having my quiet time. Uh, we'd get up at like five o'clock in the morning, have quiet time. And then I started, I was preparing for what I was gonna do that day with the children. Right. And um, I was having my quiet time and God said, you're gonna write the book and you're gonna give it to the school. Well, at that time, there was not a high school in Tatumbla through this mission group, which is called Hope for the World. Okay. And the um, the missionary lady, Marsha, came down and I told her, I said, God told me I was gonna give this book to the high school project that wow. y'all have. She said, we don't have a high school project. I said, I know that and you know that. <laughs> well, eight months later, she calls me. Mm -hmm. She said, you're not gonna believe this. But a lady who was, um, she had her certificate to do a high school, uh, to be a principal and a teacher. Yeah. She came to them mm -hmm. and said, God is leading me to start a high school for children in Tatumbla. <laughs> I know, what? I know, I thought the same thing. <laughs> and um, see, the way they do things in Honduras is the, the, the public high school, this is the one the government supports. Yeah. Um, they have to pay so mm -hmm. much to be able to go. Mm -hmm. And most of these children cannot afford. So once they get through grammar school, elementary school, um, they stop, they, their education just stops. And so uh, she, this lady came forth and, and wanted to do um, whatever you do down there to, <laughs> to get a high school started. And, um, and I had been sending money to help a child through school, just wow. an individual. And it fell through. He had to come out of school because of certain circumstances. And so the missionaries had asked me, what do you want us to do with the money that you're sending for this child? And I said, well, God said there's gonna be a high school. Wow, so just put it in a fund or put it separate aside. So when she went, the lady uh, went to the government to get the, the, the paperwork started. Mm -hmm. Larry told me, and that's the missionary, uh, he told me, he said, um, you're not gonna believe what it's gonna cost 
to get the funding to start the new high school. And I said, how much? He said, the exact amount that you had been sending us. And so it was just all, it so was all God, all, you know? Yes. He was just guiding you, directing you. Yes. He was ordering your steps. Yes. He was telling you what to say, what to do. Yes. You know, and the word of God said, my sheep yes. <laughs> know my voice. Mm -hmm. And the stranger, they will not follow. So to God be all the glory for exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I mean, he, he was leading it from day one. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know where he was leading it to or through, but yeah. he... You know, as as the opportunities arose, but I still, in the back of my mind, thought, okay, somebody else is going to be writing this. Yeah. Di you know, Diane's not going to write this, <laughs> and um, but I, I kept feeling it was just a strong urge. I can't explain it. And um, last January, before COVID hit, yeah, I got the flu. Oh, you did. I did, and I was so sick. And that weekend. The whole time I was laying there in the bed, God kept saying, because my excuse for not writing it was I didn't have time. Okay. I said, Lord, you know, I've got my family. Mm -hmm. I've got church. I've got this Bible study that I lead. I don't have time to sit down and write a book. Yeah. And um, he, he made me, he showed me that he could make me have time. So that weekend when I was so sick and in the bed wow. with the flu, he kept... Um, you say hi, I can make you have time. And, I, and I'm thinking, I'm laying there having a conversation with him and I've got a temperature of 104. And I said, Lord, you know, if you will let me get through this, I promise you, I will write this book. For well, two weeks later, when I got to go back to church, um, and of course I'm still, I'm like Gideon now, I'm putting my fleece out there every day. <laughs> and I said, Lord, if you really, really want me to write this book, yeah. I said, you let our pastor say something tonight that is going to say, to make it concrete, nail on the head. So that night during the service, he didn't say anything. Well, about two minutes before the service ended, um, he came out to the front stage and he stood there and he looked out across. He said, there's someone in this audience tonight that God's been wanting you to do something and it's time for you to step up and do it. Well, you know, I kind of slid my feet back up under the seat because, you know, I thought, oh, Lord, here it's coming down. And then he read Habakkuk 2.2. And of all verses in the Bible, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, what does it say? Um, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it said to write the revelation down on parchment, take it to the herald and run with it. And I'm thinking that is, that's what he's wanting me to do. So wow. the next week when my group met, <clears throat> I told them, I said, God's got a, I've got to do this. And they were all supportive and, you know, understood. So we met that night and then that was on a Friday night. Then that Monday night, I started writing. I'd get home from work and I would, um, at six o'clock every night, I would sit down and write to about 1130 or 12 o'clock. And I did that for almost four weeks. Wow. And that's the product. And this is the product. That's the finished product. Well, that's a beautiful story, and we are talking to Diane Callahan tonight, and she's the author of a book for such a time as this. So right now, we're getting ready to go to our uh, musical guest tonight, Shawanda Lynette, and she's going to be singing, Great Are You, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, 
Jesus. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, yes, you restore every heart that is broken and great are you lord and it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath, hallelujah, in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord yes you are and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord oh and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great Lift it to him now. Said all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Yes, you are. And it's your breath in our lungs. Yeah. So we pour out our praise. We pour. In our lungs, oh God, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out this praise. We pour out this praise. We pour out this praise, our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Well, that's the beautiful um, Shawanda Lynette singing, Great Are You, Lord. And so we did have some people to call in tonight. And uh, Randolph called in and says he's having no appetite and kidney problems. Um, someone else called in and said, pray for a good report for their sugar and blood pressure problems. And Patsy called in and said, need prayer for family salvation and healing, financial and favor. So we'll believe in God for you and with you and continue to call in tonight. We are talking to Diane Callahan. She's the author of a book for such a time as this. And so we'll believe in God for you tonight. And as uh, she wanted just saying, great are you, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Diane, we agree with that, don't we? Yes, we do. We God sure is do. great, isn't he? He is wonderful. <laughs> So, because he has done some great things in your life, even oh, from a childhood, right? Yes, yes, he has. You know, um, as, as, and this is in my book. I, I told the story about how my grandmother led me to, to Christ when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember growing up and 
uh, loving Jesus and wanting to, I wanted to be a medical missionary. And now I work for a dentist and I do get to go on mission projects. So mm -hmm. I guess in a way he met that, he met that wish of mine in, in a way. But, um, but my life when I was 16, it took a turn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, peer pressure is real hard on kids and gosh, yes. more so today, I cannot imagine what kids are going through. But I know when I was uh, a young teen, um, Peer pressure was just hard, and you know, and I was trying to do the right thing, and yeah. I had friends on both sides, if you know what I mean. I had friends who were godly friends, yeah. and then I had friends who were not so godly friends. Wow! And um, but I was just, I loved being around, you know, being around them, and and of course I I, I started getting pressure about, you know, well, you know, drink this, and this was back in the 70s when right. uh, drugs and and everything was prominent. And um, and it's like I told the story in the book about the cartoons, the little devil and the little <laughs> angel. Um, yeah. And you know, we I remember Daddy and I would sit there and we'd laugh and thought it was so funny, but then I realized now it it was so true because I had the little angel telling me, you know, not to do it, and the little devil on the other side <laughs> saying, "Oh, go and have fun," you know, when you when you have children and. Be become a mother, then you can do the right things, but go and have fun, you know. Yeah. And 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 um, that was the same voice, you know, Annie, that whispered to Eve in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. And I listened to that voice. Yeah. And it, it took me down a road as um, I had a, a teacher one time tell me, he'll take you down a road longer than you want to stay and wow. farther than you want to go. And uh, it was about 30 years. You know, and and I, all that time I was doing the church thing. Yeah. You know, I would um, uh, go to church and 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 tithe and and doing what I was supposed. To, but I had not given him certain oh. parts of my heart, mm -hmm. or parts mm -hmm. of my life, I yeah, should say. I, I was compart compartmentalizing yeah. God, and um, I did hadn't given him my whole self. Wow. And when I was forty six years old. Mm -hmm. um, he he was convicting me that you know there was more to life than than what I was doing. You know I was doing the religious thing, I was practicing religion so to speak. Okay. And um, you know and that's been almost 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And boy, our journey has been so sweet, so sweet. You started out. You you were a smart child in school. You were a student. Yes. Yes. <laughs> very smart. Very smart. And although you had so many smarts about you, you didn't make, always make the right decision. With exactly. That. Yeah. Exactly. And and you know, I I talk to young people today, and and I, I love to talk with young women about when I see something. They, if they come to me and ask me, I'll tell them. And I said, well, you're not going to probably want to hear what I got to say, but. Yeah. Um, but I've been there and I've done that, and well, I know how Satan is a liar. He's a liar, and you know he'll. If a young lady is dating this gentleman, and and there's something that's just not quite right, and I'll I'll tell the young lady. I said, um, you know, if 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 he's doing this now and it bothers you now, it's going to be ten times worse. Yes. And I said, I'm telling you, I know. Um, because, because you're telling from experience. I am telling from experience. Yeah. 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 You know, because you, you hear, you hear so much and, and these young girls just believe everything they're told and, and, and that's what I did. I believed and, you know, I think, oh, if they, if I get married, then they'll, they'll stop. They mm -hmm. don't. They right. don't. It get worse, doesn't it? It does get worse. Yeah. So, you know, I just want people or especially young girls and young ladies to know that, there's a better life out there, and and you know God wants God wants to direct them and lead them to that right person, to that right right uh, young man that they need to marry and everything. So, your book covers so much that a young person, a young lady, a young woman of God could glean from your book. You know I hope how so. things happen when we are young, but as we grow, we grow in wisdom. Yes. 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 And it's never too late. Yeah. You know, Satan will tell you that, um, you know, God can't use you anymore, yeah. you know, because you've done this or you did that or you didn't do this or do that. Yeah. And that's a lie too. 
you know, God can use you. And it, as long as you got breath in your lungs, he can, he can continue to use you. And I know that for a fact, because he's used me. Wow. And, uh, you know, the blessings, oh my gosh, I, I can't, I can't count the blessings of, you know, being able to go on mission trips and being able to help people and just encourage people. Yes. Um, people need encouragement today. It's more than ever, I think. And people know, need to know that there's a God who loves them. And um, there's another part of scripture in there that I talk about in Psalms 18. Yeah. And, you know, when we cry out to him, even though we we've not been in the place that we should be. Mm -hmm. uh, God hears our cries and, you know, and he delights in us and he will come and save us. Awesome. Yes. Well, Diane, um, where can we find more information about your book? Um, uh, I have an email address and it's for such a time as this, 2021 at yeah. yahoo.com. And um, the book is also available on Amazon, West Bow Press, that's who published the book, mm -hmm. and Barnes and Noble. It's available on there. So all you have to do is go on Amazon and type in for such a time as this, and be sure to put my name, because there's other books named for such a time as this. I found <laughs> that out. Um, but if you put for such a time as this, Diane Callahan, it'll take you straight to the book. Well, Diane, we are so thankful to have you with us on Nightline. And Thank we're you going for to having encourage me. you to come back and be with us. Because yes. a lot of your book we didn't get to share. Yes. But, it's, I mean, it's so important that we do share it. So, I would love to, yes. Yeah. And um, will you pray us out tonight? I'd be glad to. <laughs> be glad to. <laughs> yeah. So we want to thank you for tuning in to Nightline tonight. We were blessed to be talking to Diane Callahan. She wrote a book for such a time as this. And we're going to encourage everyone to get a copy of her book. Yes, Diane, we're going you. to ask you to close us out in yes. prayer tonight. Thank you so yes. much, sweet woman of God. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you for bringing us uh, together tonight. And Lord, I just... I pray over all of these that have called in tonight yes, and have these Father. prayer requests, Lord, uh, whether they be healing or financial or um, whatever their need be, Lord, we just ask that you meet them at this time for that very, for that very um, thing that they do need, God. And Father, I, I thank you for this station and I thank you for the ministry that they're doing and how they're reaching out. Uh, Lord, I just pray that um, you will continue to let them be an encouragement to people. And Father, use I've, that's been my prayer all along with this book is just to uh, use this book to glorify you, Lord, and to let people know that you are still God and you're still on the throne. And Father, we just praise you and give you all the honor and glory. In Christ's name I do pray, amen. <laughs>